Okay, turn four. Now, um, this is a peculiar situation because um, the Chimera has a few choices here. Um, it has to, you can either try to shoot at this vehicle, which has a higher armor value, um, and possibly kill it, or it can turn and fire onto this land speeder. If it fires on the land speeder, its side armor will be open to the Razorback. Uh, but the land speeder does have the most number, the most amount of weapons and shots, so it's going to go ahead and turn to fire at the land speeder. There we go. Um, now, since it didn't move, it can fire both of its weapons, so I'm going right into the shooting phase. Here's the multi laser to the land speeder. I hit with one of them, and this is strength 6 against an armor of 10. Um, again, it's a skimmer, so its armor is usually lower. I need a 4 plus, and I failed that. And the heavy bolter. I need a 4 plus here. I actually made two of them. Strength 5, I need a 5 plus, and I got one penetrating hit. Now, the land speeder is out in the open, and I'm not firing through any cover, so this goes right through and onto the table. A 6, so it actually explodes. Um, now when something explodes, you roll d6, and everything one inch away from it would get hit. Um, there's no infantry near here, so nothing happens except that the land speeder is removed. Um, so right now, the game is actually tied up with one kill point versus one kill point. Um, so we'll go right into combat. The space marine here against the guard. He hits. Three plus to wound. He fails to wound. Um, so let's do these guard here. I've got six um, veterans. And I need... Well, I actually hit with five of them. And they need fives to wound. And a, a decent attack there. Two wounds. So he'll take two saves on the space marine. And he fails one. So the space marine dies. So the Imperial Guard have won the combat. Um... So they're going to go ahead and uh, make what's called a consolidation, and they can consolidate four inches. Okay, so they move forward their four inches. Now into this combat, I've got the four assault marines with their grenades, and actually two of them hit through. Um, sixes to hit the armor, none of them go through this time. Two sentinels, they both fail their attack, so nothing happens there. Now. Um, we're going right on into turn four for the uh, for the Space Marines. Okay, so the, um, the Razorback's going to try to repair itself. It fails again. So I'm um, right into the shooting. Now it has one of two choices. Um, it can shoot at these um, veterans here. And the veterans wouldn't get their armor save, only their cover save, but their cover save is their best save anyway. Um, so... Um, it has it has a really tough choice to make because the veterans can most likely kill it, um, but it's not gonna it's definitely not gonna be able to do any wounds to the guys that can actually damage this. So it's gonna go ahead and take the shots at the side armor of the Chimera since this is probably the only chance it has to shoot it, shoot against the uh, Chimera side armor with a twin linked heavy bolt. Now what twin linked means is if any of these failed, like if this was a one, I can re-roll them once. So I'll be able to re-roll it, and I made it. So it hits with all three. Strength five against my armor of ten. And I got two penetrating hits, so this was probably worth it. So, on the penetrating table, since the Chimera's not in cover, I got a two, and I got a four. Um, four is immobilized, so the Chimera is now stuck, facing away from these heavy bolters, um, with its side armor exposed. And this one means that it can't shoot next turn. So it's stuck there, and it's pretty worthless for right now. Okay, so we're going to go right into the assault phase. we got the four grenades. Okay. Um, actually got with one of them on there. And a six. Nothing. Sentinel swipe back. Um, hits with none of them. So combat is tied again. So we're going to go ahead into turn five for the guards. Okay, difficult terrain for the Imperial Guard. Six inches. So I'm going to go ahead and move them. I'm moving them towards this vehicle here because um, I, I really want to take this thing out. I'm not going to move them their full distance, just a few inches here. 
um, is you notice I'm really only bringing these three, or actually these two guys to the front. Um, they're the only ones that can really hurt this arm, the vehicle's armor. So I'm going to keep the rest here ready to assault um, these assault marines if they, if they get the chance. So um, these guardsmen are going to go ahead and shoot their two melta guns. So now melta guns have a special rule. If you check, I'm within six inches of this vehicle. Um, six inches is half of the total range of the melter gun. So if you're within half range with a melter weapon, um, if you're in half range with a melter weapon, you get 2d6 plus its strength um, to see try to beat its armor. But first, I got to roll the hit. So they both hit. So for the first shot. For the first shot, I get 2d6 plus its strength of 8 to try to beat its armor of 11, so that's probably going to happen. And I got a 5, so it's a total of 13, so I beat that one. And the second shot, I got a 3, which just barely glances it. So, um, here's the penetrating hit. A 5, and it's armor-piercing 1, so it actually explodes. Um, armor-piercing 1 adds 1 to the table result. Um, so now i got to roll the inches. And it only explodes one inch, so it's not going to touch anything else. So we can just remove this from play. Okay, so now that's out of the way. We have this assault here with the assault marines with their grenades. They failed them all. And the sentinels fight back. He gets with one. And wounds with one. Now these assault marines make a save. Actually failed one this time, so an assault marine dies. Let's take off one of these guys. Now the, the assault marines just lost combat by one, so I have to take the leadership test at minus one. Which they actually failed. Their leadership is only eight, so they needed a seven because it's minus one. Actually, the space marines have a rule I just remembered about. It's called... Um, they shall know no fear. Uh, what this means is that they can never get overrun in combat. Um, so, yeah, I've forgotten about this rule. Um, so instead of being overrun, because they're space marines and they're not afraid of anything, they instead take, they um, are subject to the rule no retreat. Um, no retreat is for fearless units or units like space marines that can't get overrun in combat. Um, so what they do is they instead take um, another, an additional wound direct wound for each um, amount that they lost combat by. So since they lost by one, they take one additional wound. And he fails his save, so they lose another one. So it stops the whole squad from being overrun, but they lost another assault marine. So now on to turn five for the space. Okay, so the only thing the space marines can do is um, continue this assault with the sentinels with their two remaining guys. So their grenades. Fails with both of them. The sentinels fight back. Hits with one. And fails to wound, so nothing happens there. So now it's the end of turn five. Um, at the end of turn five, you roll to see if you go on. On a three plus, you go to turn six. Um, if it's turn six, you go to turn seven on a roll of four plus. So we need a three plus here to see if we go on. And we don't. The game ends right here. Um, now you add up kill points. The Imperial Guard killed the Razorback, the Land Speeder, and the Tactical Squad. So they get three kill points. The Space Marines killed only. Space Marines killed only the Stormtroopers. So it's three kill points to the one kill point of the Space Marines. So it's an Imperial Guard victory.